Praise the Lord. Can we all lift up our hands and appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Father, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. Be thou glorified and be thou honored in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be your name, Lord, for tonight. Blessed be your name. Father, touch someone, heal someone, deliver someone, liberate someone. Let today mark a turning point for somebody's life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I bring you greetings from the city of Parma in Italy. We came in here for a program, myself and Dr. Mrs. Becky and Nenche, my wife, who happens to be my camera woman right, woman right now, because of the very, very vital importance of what I'm about to preach, I decided to record this message and get it across to you. The subject is divine healing and health for God's people. Divine healing and health for God's people. We live in a world today where the enemy happens to be doing a lot of overtime. Challenges in health, all manner of afflictions, pains, hurts, and you are wondering, what is the enemy up to in this end of time? So we'd like to look at divine healing and health for God's people. For John verse 2 said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. Want to look at what is God's divine healing package for his people? That is our objective, understanding God's divine healing package for his people. The scripture makes it abundantly clear that God is eternally committed to the health and healing of his people. It is not just a wish, it is a commitment. And we're going to look at two things that made that clear. The first, of the, the first is God's promise of divine healing and health for his people literally flows through scripture. The promise of divine health and healing. The Bible said in the book of Psalm 103, verse 1 to 5, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who heal, forgive thy iniquities, who healed thy diseases, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned thy head with loving kindness. He fills your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And then we read also in Jeremiah chapter 30 and in verse 17. He said, for I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. So God's promises of divine healing and health literally flows through the scripture. Secondly, God identified himself in scriptures as the healer. He identified himself in scriptures as the healer. The first thing we have said is that he gave promises of healing and it flows through our scriptures. And secondly, he identified personally himself as the healer through our scriptures. In the book of <clears throat> Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, he said, and he said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandment, and keep all his statutes. He said, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healed thee. I am Jehovah Rapha. I am Jehovah your physician. That is first. And then we saw Jesus identify himself in scripture as the physician. In the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 23, he said unto them, You will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever thou hast done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. So he identifies himself as the physician. God identifies himself as the healer. Now, what is the implication of him being the healer? What is his assignment? I have identified the sevenfold assignment of him being our healer. Being a medical doctor by training and also being a student of scripture, I, 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 I looked at what him being a healer means in your life and in the life of any child of God. Number one, he remedies. 
he remedies. He is the healer means he remedies. Wherever something needs to be put in order, he puts it in order. Whatever in the organ, in the system, in the tissue, in the nerves that need to be put in order, he puts in order. He remedies. Secondly, he relieves. He relieves of pains. He relieves of hurts. He relieves of afflictions. He, will, he can remedy an issue, a situation, a sickness situation, or relief. He relieves. Thirdly, he repairs. He repairs. Where there is need for suturing something or doing a surgery, he repairs. He is the Lord who remedies the afflictions in your life. He is the Lord who relieves you of the pains and the hurts. He is the Lord who repairs where something needs to be repaired. Number three, he renews. He, no, four, rather. First, he remedies. Two, he relieves. Three, he repairs. Four, he renews. Renews means he refreshes and he upgrades. Renews our youth like the eagle. He brings back old structures into a newer form. He renews. He renews. Number four, five, he removes. Again, first, he remedies. Second, he relieves. Third, he repairs. Fourth, he renews. Fifth, he removes. Where diseased tissues are detrimental to the system and they don't need to be there anymore, he removes them. He removes tissues, dead tissues, he removes them. He removes. And then number six, he replaces. God has spare parts. If doctors in our generation can do organ transplant, how much more Jehovah, the, the creator of the universe, he will, he will replace that which needs to be replaced. He will restore that which needs to be restored. If a kidney is damaged, he can replace, replace a new one. If, if, if a, a chamber of the heart is damaged, he can replace a new one. He replaces. And finally, he revives. He revives means he brings back to life. He brings back Tissues, body parts, and even a whole human being. He brought Lazarus back to life. He brought Jairus' daughter back to life. And I prophesy in the name of Jesus, as you are hearing the sound of my voice, everyone whose body system needs to be remedied, receive it now in the name of Jesus. You need relief from pain and affliction and hurt. Receive relief now in the name of Jesus. Whatever in your body needs to be repaired, I prophesy repair now in the name of Jesus. Any part of your body that needs renewal, I prophesy renewal right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever is in your body needs to be removed, I declare their removal now in the name of Jesus and whatever need to be replaced I prophesy the replacement now in the name of Jesus and wherever something has died in your body that needs to be brought back to life I prophesy the revival of them now in the name of Jesus Christ say a louder amen now having said all of that what is the basis of divine healing in scripture what is the basis of God's divine healing and health package for his people? The basis of divine health and healing, I'll look at it in five ways. Number one, divine healing and health happens, number one, by virtue of creation. By virtue of creation. What does that mean? God made man, made us in his image and likeness. God is a sickless God. He is sickless. He is weakless. He is tireless. He is weariless. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 all, all the way to verse 28 when God said let's make man in our image after our likeness. In Psalm 121 verse 4, he that watches over Israel never sleeps nor slumber. And so we see a God who, who cannot be tired, he cannot be weak, he cannot be, he cannot be sleepy, he cannot be sick, he cannot be afflicted, who made us in his image. On the basis of that, what cannot be found in the image of God must not be found in the body of God's people. He made us by virtue of creation. Divine health and divine healing is a reality. Second is by virtue of the covenant. By virtue of the covenant. And that is the Abrahamic covenant. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, the Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, as it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, that you might become heirs of the promise. True faith. Now, as children of God, we are connected to the Abrahamic covenant. 
through Jesus Christ. That is what flowed in the Abrahamic lineage. Is what flows in the body and in the lives of authentic children of God. Abraham was never sick. Abraham, according to Genesis chapter 25, verse 7 to verse 8, he lived to be 175 years old before he died. Isaac, according to Genesis chapter 35, verse 28 to 29, he lived to be 180 years before he died, sickless. Jacob, according to Genesis chapter 47, verse 28, Jacob was 147 years old before he died. He lived and died in strength, all of them. And now, if you look at the book of Exodus, and in chapter 15, verse 23, the Bible said, And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured, verse 24, against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and he showed him a tree, which... When he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance. And there he proved them, verse 26. And he said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandment, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. That is covenant. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am your Jehovah Rapha. That is covenant. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am your Jehovah Rapha. That is covenant. Then you look at Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 14 to 15. He said, Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. Then in verse 15 he said, And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee. He will lay it but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. That is covenant. By virtue of what God promised to Abraham and what is flowing through the Abrahamic lineage. It means that as as children of God we are not we are partakers of the Abrahamic heritage of health. Abrahamic heritage of strength, Abrahamic heritage of longevity. So by virtue of creation, divine health and healing is ours. By virtue of the covenant, divine health and healing is ours. And then thirdly, by virtue of Calvary, by virtue of Calvary, Jesus Christ carried our sicknesses and bore our pains and infirmities on the cross of, of Calvary. And whatever he carried, we are not permitted to carry. Whatever he suffered, we are not permitted to suffer. In the book of Isaiah chapter 53 and in verse 4 all the way to verse 5, the Bible said that by his stripes we are healed. In Matthew chapter 8 verse 17, himself took our infirmities and carried our diseases. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and in verse 24, by his stripes we are healed. So Jesus Christ was the embodiment. He was the embodiment. He, 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 was, the, he, he was the conveyor. He was the, he, was the, he was the scapegoat, as it was told in the Old Testament, that carried away everything that we should have suffered. The sicknesses and the afflictions and the pains that the enemy planned for us ahead, Jesus carried them. The meaning of that is, whatever was ours was carried by Christ, and we don't have anything to carry anymore. So by virtue of Calvary, divine health, Divine healing is guaranteed. And then number four is by virtue of, mem of, of our membership with, of Christ. Membership, okay. By virtue of oneness with and membership of Christ. Oneness with Christ, membership of Christ. What does that mean? The Bible made it clear in the book of Romans and chapter 12 and in verse 5. In Romans and chapter 12 and in verse 5. It made it clear that we are the body of Christ. So we be many are one body in Christ and everyone members one of another. We are one body in Christ. We are members one of another. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 12 all the way to verse 13, for as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. So also is Christ. If we read it all the way to verse 27, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. First Corinthians 12, 27. What is the meaning of that? By virtue of the fact that we are in Christ, we are part and parcel of Christ's body. 
We are part and parcel, literally. The meaning of that is Christ was never sick. He was never weak. He was never afflicted for once. What cannot be found in Christ cannot be found in us. What was not his testimony cannot be our testimony. Hallelujah. What was not found in Christ can be found in us. What was not his testimony cannot be our testimony. So by virtue of creation, by virtue of the covenant, by virtue of Calvary, how he carried our sin, and by virtue of oneness with and membership of Christ, every part of the lion is a lion. Every part of the elephant has size. Every part of Christ has the life of Christ in it. And by virtue of being members of the body of Christ, we have the guarantee of divine healing and the guarantee of health. That was number four. And then number five is by virtue of the habitation of the spirit. The habitation of the spirit. The habitation of the spirit. The Bible said in the book of that was the meaning of that. The meaning is by virtue of the fact that the Holy Spirit lives inside us. By virtue of that fact, we have the guarantee of divine healing and the guarantee of divine health. The Bible said in Romans chapter 8 and in verse 11, he said, if the spirit of him, Romans chapter 8 and in verse 11, he said, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. If the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead, that is the Holy Spirit, dwells inside your body, he will quicken your mortal body. He will impart life. The meaning of that is the Holy Spirit inside your body irrigates you, saturates you, penetrates, animates you. 